Hello everybody, I'm Foulplay Gaming, and welcome to this Acroma deck building video. This is part one of a three part series where I'm going to be showing you how to create six custom decks for the realm, the Siege of Draco Temple in the card game Acroma. As this will be quite a long video, there'll be timestamps at the top of the description so you can skip to any part of the video that you want to see most. The reason why I'm splitting this video into three parts is for two reasons. One, because I'm going to be spending quite a bit of time talking about each deck and therefore doing any more than two decks per video would make this an entire movie to watch. Secondly, I've made these decks to synergize within the lore of Acroma. And the way I've done it is the decks kind of go in pairs when they synergize with each other. So it makes sense that we pair them together for the video. So to start with, the first two decks I'm going to be covering are two decks that I like to call the Great Battle for Draco Temple. Now before we get into it, as a quick disclaimer, you will need to own the entire realm of the Siege of Draco Temple to be able to build any of these decks, as we use a lot of cards from different standard decks. However, if you only have one or two of the starter packs, you may still be able to make some of the decks, you might have a few cards missing that you have to subsidize, you can still give it a go, but ideally you do need to have the whole realm for this to work across all six decks. Each of these decks has been carefully crafted to make sure the following things happen. Firstly, they all fit within the law of the realm. So they aren't, I'm not gonna start making drakes and dragons be best friends. They all still have a backstory behind them that makes sense alongside the main official law. Secondly, all of these decks are legal, meaning they've been created using the set rules for deck building and do not stray from that. Thirdly, just be aware that some of these decks are very similar to the starter decks. Uh, especially in the strategy, but every single deck has had a few cards at least swapped in and out to make the decks be overall better balanced across the board. And with the introductions out of the way, let's get straight into it by looking at the first of the two decks in this video. Let's start with deck one, which we're calling Tenebris's Offense of Draco Temple. For those of you that just want to get stuck in and play, here are all the cards you will need to play this deck. Feel free to pause the video if you wish to be able to start building your deck now. However, you will find in the description the same list that is on screen to be able to build your deck later. So let's start by talking about the lore behind this deck. That's better. So this is Tenebris completing an all out final assault on the Draco Temple. He's rallied all of the available Drakes. He's harnessing the powerful objects that they've stolen and obtained and even using some underhanded tactics, actions, and even some research that's been stolen from the Draco Library. Using all of this power and might in his command, he aims to bring an end to Chroma and Draco Temple today. So now we know the lore of this deck, let's have a little look at the strategies that you should be using with this deck to try and win. Now, just like other Drake decks within the realm, it is very unlikely that you are going to steal your way up to 30 shards. Instead, your main goal here is to reduce your opponents down to zero. How I've built this deck is it is a fully Drake deck. From how the lore is supposed to be an all out attack of Draco Temple, this deck is built with the maximum amount of Drakes available within the rules, which is eight. You do still have your legendary, however, he is not a Drake. Now with those Drakes, the deck has been built around keeping them as strong as possible and keeping them protected on the board so that you can use them to drain and steal as much as possible. With this deck, you need to be trying to win early. If you don't win early, then decks that are gaining shards will very likely overtake you in the mid game and win. So you need to be aggressive, get as many drakes out as possible and keep them alive. I've built this deck with loads of objects and locations that are specifically designed to keep your Dracos strong, alive and protected. So that is the overall strategy. Get your drakes on the board, keep them alive, make them powerful, dominate the board and use those drakes with some of these awesome cards I'll show you in a moment to steal your way to victory. So as we just mentioned, the whole strategy around this deck is about filling your board with drakes, keeping them alive and keeping them strong. So let's now dig into the deck itself and see how these cards synergize together to build your Drake army and keep them alive. Starting with your most important cards in this deck, Tenebris. 
He is one of your most powerful characters with a plus three steal, six attack and defense, as well as the ability to erase a character or location. Now keep in mind though, he is not a drake. So when we talk about all these cards that involve your drakes, they might not necessarily help. Here is one of your other most powerful cards, Akrom Balneum. What makes this card so strong is it gives all of your characters that have a black triangle, which will be all of your characters, protection from any chroma based characters that have colored shards. Now, if you can get this out it me and you have many of your drakes out on the field, it will mean that you can freely attack any characters and not worry about yours dying. Likewise, it means that no one can kill any of your drakes without killing this location first, unless they use any form of action, which isn't counterable. Next, we have Umbra Aqueous, a really solid card, and it is another drake in your build. And when Umbra Aqueous attacks, and erases a character, you gain the erase character shards. This is a really good way to keep your shards up if you can get this character out and keep him alive. Then you have Akrom Haven. Now, when you play this deck, it is unlikely that you are going to be looking to raise all the way up to 30. It is more likely you're going to be reducing your opponents to zero. However, Akrom Haven is a really fantastic and powerful card in this deck because you have got the most amount of drakes possible. And if you can get Akrom Haven out at a time where you have a decent amount of drakes, at least three to four out on your canvas, it means that you are gonna be stealing a lot from your opponents, which will get them closer to death and give you so much more that you can do on your next turns. And that brings me on to my next card, which is Mirror Sanctum. This is not a card normally within a Drake deck. Mirror Sanctum is a fantastic rare card. At only one shard, it means you can deploy as a copy of another location, which means you can choose between getting a second Akron Balneum, where you can give your characters a double down on your protection, or you could double up on your Akron Haven, giving you even more steal ability. Now this does mean that you do have to try and get Akron Balneum or Akron Haven out before you can play it. However, it just, if your cards come out right, you can get some really, really strong protection and steal on the board. Looking at the main cards in your deck then, which are your characters, you will see that the way this deck has been built means that you have the maximum possible drakes available, totaling eight drakes and two rocks. This is the maximum amount of drakes that you can fit in a deck based on the rules, which gives you the best opportunity to make use out of your Akron Haven, Mirror Sanctum and Akron Blanium as discussed. To try and keep your drakes as powerful as possible, especially if you aren't able to get your protection out early, we've included in this deck four objects of power, including Ring of Fire, which is not normally in a drake deck. These you want to attach to your lower drakes, uh, like your Impious Drake that only has two health, or even your Malium Drakes that have one health. This way you can keep them on the board for longer, especially if they've not got protection, so that you can try and get your protection out before they die. Now you might run into an issue where the opponents have some really strong locations and characters themselves. So on top of lots of cards to give you a really strong board, we have to make sure we include some cards to control the board. What if your opponent has some really strong locations or characters on the board themselves? Well, that is why in this deck is included decent control cards. These are all actions that can either erase locations, erase characters in one way or another. These can be quite costly, but they'll be so important if you need to erase a very strong card on the other side, especially locations. Lastly, no deck would be finished without some utility. So that's why we've got included seven cards in this deck that will give you utility. These cards range from things like card draw, to researching, to doing really useful things like stopping dragons from attacking. And some cards like Search for Wisdom have been included because they are really good fodder cards that you know that when you pick up one of these, it's a really easy card you can trade for four quick shards. As the issue with this deck is that you, are, you will very often struggle to keep your shard count high if you haven't been able to get these steel cards out. And therefore having a few high cost cards like Search for Wisdom that although they are useful, you can very happily throw away and not ruin your build is fantastic. To help compare this deck to other decks, we're gonna look at the stats of how much gain, minus, steel and block potential there is so you can see how it sizes up against other decks. With this deck, 
There is zero opportunity to gain. There is no cards with any gain abilities. There is a total of 18 minus. Now, just to be very clear, that is not 18 cards with minus on. That is a total of 18 minus if you were to have every card out in this deck that has a minus on it. There is seven steel. However, keep in mind that is not including cards that have the potential to be higher, like Akron Haven. That is just cards that have steel in the top right. This deck also has zero block potential. So therefore, you should be stealing and minusing your way to victory. There is no way that you could passively gain or block. You have to be on the offensive. Lastly, let's look at three positives, three negatives, and one top tip for playing this deck. Firstly, this deck is really offensive when it comes to characters on the canvas. Although other decks might have more characters, when you get your drakes out with an object of power or two and some of these strong locations, you will dominate the board when it comes to the attack phase. The second positive is with the addition of Mira Sanctum, the maximum amount of drakes, and also some of the other cards that we discussed. What's nice about this drake deck compared to the starter drake deck is that if in the mid game a couple of your really important cards get erased by your opponent, it's not game over. This deck contains multiple cards that can give you the win mechanic or the massive snowball potential you need. Whereas I found that in the initial starter drake deck that you, if some of your good cards got deleted, it was practically game over. So you have that slight security that if one or two of your good cards get erased, it's not necessarily game over. The last positive is that with some of the research and some of the other actions that I've inputted into this deck, it gives you some really nice handy deck management as well as some board control that Drake decks normally don't have. As for the negatives, the first one is card draw. This deck relies on you getting objects of power and also locations with your Drakes on the canvas as soon as possible. If you get unlucky with card draw, like other decks I presume, you could have a terrible start to this game. And as this is a deck which relies on you having a good start, if you fail to get those important locations and objects alongside your Drakes, you will struggle. The second negative, like other Drake decks, is that you are going to struggle with how many cards you can play per turn due to your shard count. Unless you get really lucky and manage to get down some decent steel cards in the first or second turn, you are going to struggle to gain more shards and you're going to find yourself often having to trade at least once per turn. Due to this, not only are you going to be starting every single turn with relatively low shards, but you're also going to very quickly get to the point where you only have one to two cards at the start of each turn. Sometimes you'll have zero cards until the start of your next turn. And having this is going to really, really then, well, sorry, it's going to uh, lean on that first negative of if you don't then have good card draw, you are then going to be stuffed. So that is a major negative with really any Drake deck, but even more so with this one. The third negative is because this deck is a very, very early game mechanic build, it's so important that you don't let your opponents get more on the board in the early few turns than yourself. If you let your opponent snowball early, you are going to find it really, really difficult because with the lack of shards that you will have per turn, you won't always be able to play two or three cards per turn, which means that you're going to be trickling cards onto the board. And if you let your opponent get the better early game and have more cards out that can control the canvas, then it means that when you're trickling these cards onto the deck, they'll be destroyed before your next turn, before you can then start to give them some strength. So it's really important as a negative that you don't let your opponent snowball before you. And lastly, a top tip for this deck. Don't be tempted to splash out on your first turn. Although I've just mentioned that early game is really important for this deck, it can be really tempting on your first turn to spend a good five to eight shards and get a good two or three cards out nice and early. However, this will likely, unless you get lucky and have decent steel cards at the beginning, this will likely leave you on only two to four shards after your first turn, with very little net gain. Which means that on your next turn, you are forced to trade very quickly. Also, getting those cards out so quickly on the first turn will often lead to an opponent using a card like Breath of Ice or uh, Fireball to remove the early game from you. Now, when that happens, and it has happened quite a few times to me, you'll be in a position where you're starting your second turn with only two to four shards, only one or two cards in your hand, and next to nothing on your canvas, and then you're straight away going to struggle. 
When I left the first turn and just drew and traded one, meaning that I ended my first turn with nothing on the board, but I would end my first turn with 12 to 15 shards. Then when I start my second turn, I can comfortably play three cards that synergize together, hopefully if card draw works well for you, like a drake, an object to keep them alive, and maybe even a location to prevent the dragons from attacking or give them protection. And after playing these three cards, you'll still be on as high as five to seven shards, meaning that the next turn, you still are in a good position. So that's my top tip for this deck. Moving on to deck number two of this video. Darnakusk's Guard of Draco Temple. If you're watching this video and you just want to get the deck built and start playing right away, then on screen right now is all of the cards you will need to build this deck, as well as a list of all cards if that is easier for you. You can either pause the video here or you can go down to the description of the video where these will also be listed. So then, what's the lore for Darnakusk's Guard of Draco Temple? Well, Darnakusk has heard of Tenebris' attack coming soon. He's heard of the gathering of drakes that is coming his way, and he's been doing some preparation of his own. He's rallied the strongest and the bravest dragons of Draco Temple. He's also taken some research from the library, and he's brought all of the best artifacts that they can find. And they know that they are up for one hell of a battle, but they are fully prepared. Dug in into some of the best locations, with their strength in numbers, they plan to do the best and most valiant defense of Draco Temple, as they know if Draco Temple falls, Chroma does too. Now we've had a look at the lore, let's look at the strategy that you should be using when playing this deck to beat your opponents. Like other dragon decks within this realm, it is more likely that you're going to win by raising your shard count all the way up to 30 as this deck contains pretty much no ways to steal or minus shards from other people, so your goal is to get up to 30 shards. This deck is very much a mid to late game build. You want to try and slowly raise the amount of dragons you have on the board, and then use some key cards like strength and numbers to be able to have a couple of turns where you very quickly snowball, gain anywhere between 10 to 15 shards per turn, and reach that 30 mark, and your opponents won't even know the victory was coming. Let's dive into a little bit of a deeper strategy by looking at the cards. So, as just discussed, the main strategy for this deck is to get out a load of dragons and then utilize those numbers to gain you as much chroma as fast as possible to win the game. Let's take a deep dive into how the individual cards in this deck all work towards that goal. Firstly is your legendary, Darnakus. Now, he is a fantastic legendary that works perfectly for this type of deck, very similar to how the base deck of this type will work. He is a very strong six health character, which is perfect counter for if you're playing against the Tenebris deck, which I've mentioned earlier in this video. On top of that, you get to draw three cards, which is fantastic utility. But the best bit about Darnakus is his middle section that says plus one for each of your dragons. Because this doesn't say the word action before it, you can do this on every single resolve step. So as you can see, you have lots of dragons in this deck currently on the screen. If you can get out a decent handful of those before or after getting Darnakusk out, you will be raking in those shards every single turn. We then have Materno, which is a fantastic character to get out. Not only is this card a plus two, more shards the better, but it gives all characters on your canvas with a shard value of two or less protection. You'll notice if you look at all of these different dragons that quite a lot of them have a shard value of two or less. Which if you're going against any other deck that has a lot of characters like the Tenebris deck, you are going to struggle to keep those up and alive. And this is how you are going to win with this deck, so you need to protect them. And Materno is the perfect card to do so. Especially if you equip Materno with an object of power when possible. These next three cards are without a doubt some of the most important for this deck. Monastery Nest and Chroma Storehouse, of which you have two of the Monastery Nest, are so powerful as locations to gain you a lot of Chroma. Each Monastery Nest will net you plus three per resolve. And Chroma Storehouse, if you play that once you've got a lot of your drakes on the board, you can pick one color shard and gain two Chroma for each card on your canvas. For example, if you look, most of your dragons share the same colors, either dark blue or red. So you could really stack up some chroma using these three locations. Equally, there is also a mirror sanctum in this deck. 
meaning not only do you have those three strong locations, but you have an ace up your sleeve where you can use Mirror Sanctum to duplicate any of these locations based on what you think is important. And then if you've played any Dragon deck before, you will have seen these cards. You do still have two Strength in Numbers. These should not be wasted in this deck. You must, must, must wait until you have a decent amount of your Dragons out before using Strength in Numbers to get the most out of them. You can use them to get out of a tight spot if you have been drained by quite a lot, but ideally save these near to the mid late game where you can then play them and win the game in a turn or two. To accompany your horde of dragons, we have also included a couple of objects of power into this deck. You have the Jade Dragon Pendant, which is very good with dragons, a Ring of Ice, and also a Prism Stone. Not only is the Prism Stone a fantastic and relatively cheap object to play, but it gives you plus three, which if you get that out early game on a relatively weak dragon, not only will it keep the weak dragon alive for longer, but it will give you some serious chroma for the early game. As with other decks, you need to make sure that a deck contains some form of cards that can destroy locations or characters of your opponents. Without this, then you are susceptible to another player snowballing and winning the game. That's why in this deck there are two Breath of Ice, two Dragon Defences, as well as a Breath of Fire to give you plenty of control of the board. Lastly, I've also included in this deck Monastery Underside and Great Cloister. This provides you with the opportunity to do a little bit of stealing and also gives you the opportunity to block some of your stealing from other sides. This means that if you are in a bit of a short chroma moment midway through the game where maybe you've been drained a little bit and you really need to try and pull it back by getting out a little bit of block or putting out a little bit of steel it means that that will help you through that mid game to be able to recover from maybe a bit of a tricky moment. Now let's take a look at the stats for this deck. Like I said for deck one this is a really good way to quantify and compare decks. So the total amount of gain that you will have between the entirety of this deck is 22. Again, to be clear, this is not you have 22 cards that allow you to gain. This is if you were to play every card on the deck at once, you would have 22 gain per turn. This does not include cards like Strength in Numbers, where you can play to gain a massive increase in one go. There is no opportunities for any minus cards in this deck. You have one card that allows you to steal one. However, this can be du duplicated using Mirror Sanctum. And you also have three opportunities to block. Again, not three actual cards. I think it's one card that blocks one and one that blocks two. This gives you just a little bit of defense where needed. Lastly, let's again look at three positives, three negatives, and one top tip for this deck. Positive number one. This deck is a mid to late game win build, meaning that it's not the end of the world if you don't have the strongest start. Even if the other player has a bit of a stronger start than you, as long as you can do damage control and keep yourself alive to the mid to late game, you will almost certainly get past. So don't stress too much if with this deck you don't have the best starting hand. The second positive about this deck is compared to all of the other five decks that I've made as part of this series, this deck alone has the highest number of bounce backs, whereby if you play some strong cards and they get erased very quickly by your opponents, it's not game over, you have lots of other cards you can rely on, more so than any other deck in this series. And the third positive for this deck is this is very easy to pick up and learn and play. Because the general strategies for this deck are not very complex, the cards that you need to synergize are not too specific, and also because you don't have to optimize every card to get the most out of this deck, meaning it's not too critical if you use strength in numbers too early and, and not get any uh, use out of it, it means that for new players, it, they don't get completely wiped if they make a few silly mistakes whilst learning the game. So I'd recommend giving this deck to someone that maybe you're trying to teach the game to. On to the negatives then, and the first one. Although you have a lot of characters in this deck, quite a lot of them are very, very weak, and you don't have that many objects of power either. What this means is although you will be filling up your canvas with lots of characters for your win mechanic and strategy, it is very likely that if you're playing against another opponent who has a deck that is full of strong characters, that they are going to very quickly wipe your canvas out. And if you don't have a way of timing your placements correctly or a way of protecting your dragons, then you are gonna find that your board gets wiped quickly and your win strategy will go out the window very quick. The second negative for this deck is of a very similar nature, that to win, you're going to be having to put a lot of cards on your canvas at the same time. So near the mid to late game, you could potentially have 
a good 10 to 12 cards out on your canvas. This makes you very, very vulnerable to massive canvas wipe cards like Chroma Extinction that would potentially see almost all of your cards get destroyed in potentially one or two turns and this would essentially completely ruin your game. And people playing against this deck will quite often know that that is your strategy and will plan their their card draw based around, I won't play this card until they're close to winning to try and end your strategy. So it makes you vulnerable by having all those cards out at once. And the third negative for this deck is, especially in three or more player games, because you are most likely going to be the player with the most amount of shards at any one time, it is likely that you are going to be target number one, which means that other players are going to team up and potentially start targeting you more because they're going to see you as a threat constantly getting close to winning. Now, for some people, you might see that as a good challenge and good fun, but be aware, if you're the type of person that maybe dislikes people ganging up on you in games, this deck is almost certainly going to put a target on your back. And lastly, a top tip for this deck would be use your Draco Fledglings wisely. Draco Fledgling is a card which when you play it, you immediately gain one extra shard for each dragon on your canvas. And many times when people have been playing this deck, I've seen them use it far too early. People often see it as a card where if you only have one or two dragons on your canvas, you play it because you think, well, it's a free card, so I may as well play it. Because by playing it for cost of one, you know, as long as you've got at least one other dragon on your canvas, well, you get the shards back, so it's a free card. However, he's very easily destroyed, and ideally you want him played at the right time, staying on the board, for cards like Strength in Numbers. I know it can be very easy and very tempting to play them early because it's a free card, but I would save them until you at least have three or four drake, uh, dragons already on your canvas so that not only is it a free card, but in case it gets wiped out before your Strength in Numbers comes out, at least you get a much better gain of shards for the value of the card. Because once that card has been played, apart from its use in stacking up Strength in Numbers, the card has essentially no other value. It has no resolve cost, as in it doesn't give you any resolve uh, numbers, and it doesn't you know, really help you in battles because it's only a one attack, one defense card. So don't use your Draco Fledglings too early. Hold on to them. I know they're free, but get better value out of them. And there we have the first two decks of this series. Now, if you're here just for the deck building, then thank you very much for watching. Have a great day. However, if you'd like to now see how these two decks stack up against each other in some live games, then carry on watching. What you're about to see are three live recorded games from Twitch, where I've chopped up the highlights of the games to see how balanced they really are. I'd love to hear in the comments what you guys think. And remember, there are still the timestamps of the different uh, timings, should you wish to skip to any of the games. Let's watch. Uh, I am going to start nice and simple. Okay, I'm going to start my turn by Roaring. Uh, I am going to then play... I'm going to play down my Rock uh, for two. Uh, and I'm also, for another two, going to attach to them a Chrom Claw. I will put these on screen in a moment. Uh, so Steel and Drain, but obviously yeah. they won't they won't be able to yeah, do yeah, any... Yeah. Uh, but... the first time Am I going to play anything else? I think I'm going to go no. I'm just going to go to my resolve phase. Now, in, in the first resolve phase... Oh, I just realized as well. I drew, didn't I? I'm going to put that card back. I just realized something I, I always forget it. In a two-player game, the first player doesn't draw or trade at the beginning. Mm -hmm. So I put that card back. I'm going to pick it up in a moment anyway. Um, so I will go into the resolve phase, uh, but I can't steal and I can't minus on the first turn. So I will end my turn by drawing. All good. Go for it. Okay. But yeah, welcome in, Levi. Good to see you. Right, so I'm allocate. Okay, so you can uh, play Great Cloister. Yeah. Uh, we touch one, so the cards. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah research one. Fire. Oh, oh damn, you're getting out your Breath of Fire really yeah, early. That's a, um, that's an uncommon, isn't it? Uh, so that is, uh, yeah, raise a character location. So, yep, that gets rid of my uh, rock and my Akron Claw. So, I'm going to put my discard pile there, I think. Uh, and then from the last play, a rubber. O W O. Rubber, 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 rubber Draco. Let's yeah. Um, and then, obviously, I've got nothing to attack. Uh, we will pass that. Uh, then, resolve. So, I'll get plus two, and I get to. 
gain one is that? Uh, yeah, you, you gain two. Oh no, no, that's a steal, but you can you can steal because it's I've already had my turn, so turn you click on me and plus it that way, that's uh, right. It's plus? That's that one, yeah. yeah, yeah. Then you steal nice. one from me. Yeah. You're gonna draw? Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna start my turn by uh, trading. So I'm gonna put my, uh, so I've got Search of Wisdom here. Um, I'm just gonna, yeah, I'm just getting rid of it for four. Um, can't attack. So in my uh, deploy phase, I'm gonna get down a Malium Drake for one. Uh, I'm also going to play for three. Uh, Ring of Ice. Yep. Um, so I'll play. I'll put these on screen in a moment. Um, and I'm gonna really be putting myself at risk here I, for four points, bring me all the way down to one health. Uh, I'm gonna play Akrom ha Haven. Resolve phase. Then I get to steal one from you. Yep. Because you haven't got a block, and I also get to. So this means I get to steal based on how many drakes I've got. So I get to steal one. Uh, and I'm going to end my turn by drawing because I don't have any other cards that I can trade. Your turn. Right, I'm going to start by drawing. Yep. Okay. Playing Breath of Ice for oh, two. Oh, damn. To erase that location. That's two really good turns I've had. And you just, like... <laughs> that, that's, I'll, I'll say now, whilst you're doing the rest of your turn, that's the hardest thing I've been finding against the Drakes versus Dragon decks is with the Dragon decks, when something gets removed from yours, you yep. have quite a lot of other things you can replace it with. For me, yeah. when you get rid of some of the good cards in Drakes, I'm gonna be I'm gonna now be really scraping the barrel for points. That's a tough yeah. start. Four. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that'll be two and so gain two and steal one. That yeah. puts me down to one point. God damn. One. Um, and I'm going to break this for three. Okay. Um, okay. So my turn. I will draw. Uh, I actually, yeah, I will attack. So, um, I will, my, my Malium Drake attacks your rubber Draco. So, um, for those that, uh, can't see my Malium Drake and Ring of Ice, uh, if I put it there, has a total of one and three. So that is four health and four damage. And Ashley's has two. Now, the way that, uh, attack and defense works is I do all the damage to Ashley, then his does all the damage back. So by me doing four damage to him, he will die because he only has two health, but he still does two damage back. But here's the key thing. When a character has a object of power on them, like mine does here, the object gets damaged first. This only has three damage, which means nothing of mine dies. So that goes into a discard. Perfect. Uh, so I'll now go to my deploy phase of which I'm going to deploy nothing because I'm very low on uh, my spending points right now. Um, I'll do my resolve, which is to minus one from Ashley. Uh, and I will then finish my turn by trading Mortius Drake to gain four back. Uh, to be on five. So I'm now on five hit points. And with that, I end my turn. Okay, okay. So, um, nothing to attack with. So we won't be doing that. Um, next stage will be deploy. So we'll be playing cards. Um, so for this, I'm going to play uh, Draco Fledgling for one. So basically what this card will do, uh, whenever I have any other dragons on, on in play, um, it will give me extra life uh, at the end of the, uh, in the resolve round of the phase. Materno for three. Uh, so all characters on your canvas with a shard value of two or less get protection. Yep, sounds good. Okay, and I'm also going to trade uh, resolve first. Sorry, I've got resolve. Yeah, yeah. yeah so plus two, steal one. Plus two, plus one for that. Oh, oh, so that just really quickly. Other dragon. Yeah, that was a way that you should have done as you played it, not during that. So that's not every because it says action before it. That's not okay, every single okay, resolve phase. Okay, that's okay, when okay. you play it down. I think so, we did play it like that last time. To be fair. Uh, no, I, I yeah. well, I don't maybe, know. maybe. Yeah. But um, yeah, <laughs> if it says action, it's you play it as soon no as you put it down. So, so you can still you can still add it yeah, unless yeah, you've already done yeah, it. Yeah, yeah it's not fine. And then and still one. Still one. Trade three. Yep. Um, okay, so uh, I am going to start my turn by drawing. 
I'm gonna do a bit of a, a long game, I think. I really want to get some of these cards down, but I can't leave- You've still got that one steal, I can't leave myself vulnerable. Um, as much as I don't want to leave you getting more powerful for longer, what I'm gonna do is... Uh, so I've, I've drawn. I am not going to attack at this point in time. Um, I'm going to... Personally, in my turn, I am not going to attack. We then go into the deploy phase, where you can deploy up to three cards from your hand. Now, in my particular turn, I'm going to choose not to. The reason why is because when you deploy cards, you have to pay the cost in the middle of your card you, out of your life points. And I'm very low, so I'm not going to play them. So in my resolve phase, which I'll do now, I get to minus one point from my opponent, Ashley, which I can do via the app here. Um, and then to end, you get to draw or trade again. I am going to trade... Ooh. No, I'm going to do the long game and I'm going to draw. Yeah, I'm going to draw and I'm going to end my turn there. All right, so uh, you, I saw you just drew. About to draw now. Oh, you're about to draw. Okay, come on. Yeah. He's thinking about it. Yeah, I'm thinking about it. I just, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Okay, I, I am, I am going to draw. I am going to draw. Okay, okay. Okay, okay I'm going to play one card. Yep. And I'm going to attach it to my turn. Okay, so it is a... a five. Uh, Uncommon pod object, so that is Prism Stone, so you guys can see top right there what that looks like. Um, and yeah, it essentially gives uh, it gives his character an extra uh, plus two to his... Uh, so this character is now worth five points, basically. And wow, you also gain five. That's... Yeah, Prism Stone is a really good item, man. Okay, I'm gonna call it there. Um, I'm not gonna... I wasn't gonna attack anyway. And then I'll resolve for five, six. Five, five and then steal one. Yeah. Oh, this game, I'll be honest, this game might be over quite quickly, just because you've got a lot of shards and you now got a lot of shard gain. But I wouldn't, so far, I wouldn't say that this is because your deck has been overly powerful. It's just that I've, I've, I've actually had some really good cards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just really lucky. I've you had, had some counters. That, that fireball counters. and that yeah, breath yeah. of ice was so important. All right, so I'm going to start my turn by uh, trading. Now, I really don't want, I, I really don't want to trade my drakes because the whole point of this deck is to get drakes out. But right now, needs must. I'm going to start my trade, uh, my uh, turn by trading this dragon worth four, which puts me up to seven points. Uh, in my attack phase, I am going to choose to not attack because I would definitely die. In my deployment phase, though, the, uh, I am going to play Akrom Belenium. Uh, All of my characters with at least one black triangle, which my Malium Drake does, now has protection from all colors. So that means that even though he's got more powerful guys over on that side, you now can't kill me. Okay. Um, that did cost me five though, so that puts me down to two. Got you up. Um, and I am going to end my turn by... So, on. is it working reverse as well? You attack? Yeah, so I if I attack to you, I can do damage to you, but you so don't do damage to me. Okay, cool. Um, which just Won't really make a difference right this second. So this character, for example, because you've now made that character have five attack and five defense, this guy is kind of useless because I can't attack you twice in one turn, so I can't kill that. Yeah. And I can't kill that because this character has defend, yeah, yeah, which I think yeah. Rhea's put in. Um, um, okay, I'm going to end my turn uh, by drawing. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, drawing. So I am going to start with a draw. So I'm going to start by playing Vera Sanctum. So oh, that's so yeah. Blade Oyster. Very strong. So basically this card allows me to copy the card that I've already got out. So basically you now have two Great Cloisters. So he's duplicated his Great Cloister, so he now has two steel. Um, what that does mean, by the way, so I did check this with the uh, creators. At the point, because you're creating, because you're duplicating that card, the, you can now do the action as if you've just played it. So you do get to do the research one. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna keep it. Yeah, okay. yeah, I'm gonna keep it. Fair play. Um, and I'm also gonna play it for one. Okay. And then I'm also gonna play this for six. Oh damn! Yeah, this is uh, this is the beginning of the end, I think, for me. Um, <laughs> I've been building up for a while. I've had yeah, it in my hand yeah. for a while. Um, yeah. So uh, I get to draw three cards for that. Yep. Um, and. Uh, that's why he's just played. Yep. Yeah. So I get uh, plus one for. Let's do the corner ones first, actually. So oh, yeah, two, it's good. Five, there. six. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and then I get skill two. 
Oh. Oh, yeah. Wow. You know what? <laughs> we didn't even see that coming. We, 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 keep, we kept playing the game, not even realizing that actually, once you've done that, you're going to win. Yeah. You know what? That's the first ever time. That's the first ever time that I've seen dragons beat Drakes by you draining me to zero. And funnily enough, in that deck that I, this is a, these are custom decks I've made. In this deck, you only have one card that can steal, and it's this one, and you happen to mirror it. Yeah. Well, true. fair enough. Mm. It's hard when I don't know what your cards are properly. Yeah, I'm gonna start by drawing. I'm actually not going to deploy anything. Okay. Believe it or not. Uh, I'm just gonna go straight to my draw. I'm uh, basically I'm just gonna go straight to the end, and I'm going to. Uh, Spend. Uh, I'm gonna basically uh, get okay. rid of my Drake ambush for. Okay, for, get them shards up early. And That's end good. my That's turn. Good. Yeah. Not so simple. Yeah, we're gonna, gonna do. I'm gonna draw. Then I'm going to play Rubo Draco. <laughs> okay, so that is uh, Rubo Draco. That is there on the screen, top right for you folks. And then with. Prism Stone. Yeah, that so is again a very, very good card, Prism Stone. And then, my last card. Yep. Two, I could have played Great Cloister. Oh, the good old Great Cloister. Uh, so, because I have had my first turn, you can also. Uh, yeah, 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 so when you go into the drain. You can drain. I can drain. Because I've already played. Yeah. See, this is where the difference is. If you'd have yeah, gone first, yeah, I could have drained. Yeah, yeah. You couldn't, but I. Yeah, it would be really. Uh, <laughs> That's where it gets a little bit. Um, anything else? Oh, yeah, have you, um, you need to be resolved, don't you? Yes, just give him a resolve, so that's uh, plus five and a still one. Yep. Let's see how this goes. I'm going to start my turn by playing... Can I do this? Oh, it's going to be tough. I'm going to play Tenebris. So, firstly, this is my... Uh, this is my legendary character. I'll place him on the screen top right there. He is a 6-6 six, six character with a plus... Uh, a steel three... And his action is I can erase one location or character. I am going to choose to get rid of your great cloister because I don't want you to do that steal. Um, so that cost me six. One, two, three, four, five, six. I am also going to play Akrom Haven for another four. One, two, three, four. Akrom Haven is a really powerful card. Um, essentially, it means that uh, during the resolve phase, I can steal more based on uh, how many drakes. Do you mind if I change my mind a little bit? Do you okay with that? Can never just played it. I, know what card I mean, you know what card I'm going to say back. Only because um, something that actually it was uh, a. It's partly your boy uh, realized, and you know I'm I'm gonna. So you know Tenebris. Yeah. Well, obviously I've just I've just shown this Akram Haven. This means that I get uh, steel based on the amount of drakes I have on my canvas. He's not a drake. <laughs> He's technically a dragon. Okay. Yeah, again, okay, if you if you guys look at um, the very top of Tenebris, he is technically a dragon. Instead, what I'm going to play is... Uh, I'm going to play... Ooh, shall I do this? Yeah. I'm going to play Malium Drake for one. And for three... Or not, not plus three. Minus three. I'm also going to play Ring of Ice onto Tenebris as well. There we go. It is. It gives me three extra health, um, and once per turn, I can defend a character. Um, that ends my deploy phase, so we now go into the resolve, which is steal three and minus one. You don't have a block yet, do you? So steal three, one, two, three, and minus one from you. And I'm going to finish my turn by Ooh, strong, roaring. Strong, strong, strong. Yeah. And if he doesn't, if he doesn't have in his hand or draw soon, an easy way to get rid of Tenebris. Um, then I could potentially snowball very quickly. I've got to go digging, unfortunately. Uh, I'm okay. Um, Equatio Draco. Basically, li Liquid Boy. Yeah, uh, and that allows me to draw a card. I'm not going to attack. Yeah, That's fine. Uh, we'll leave it like that. Um, and then I'm going to play... Thank you, Cap. I appreciate that, mate. Oh, um, strength in numbers for two. And yeah. that gives me two for each. So, so basically, four. I just add two. Rather than playing the two, okay? Yeah, yeah, they, yeah, that works. Yeah. Um, and then that was leave it there and trade that for three. Okay. And did you did you do your resolve? Uh, and resolve, yeah. Had you done that? No. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right, so uh, my turn then. I am going to start by. 
getting, oh, you know what? Do I do that? No, I'm gonna trade search for wisdom. That gives me four back in. Um, but yes, welcome in Zacco. Okay, so uh, I have traded that for four. I did add that on, so I'm on 10. So I'm in my attack phase. Uh, I will, uh, yeah, I will attack your Draco, uh, Rubo and Prism Stone. So that is gonna destroy my ring, that will destroy my, um, that will destroy my Ring of Ice, um, but you'll get rid of both of those. Yep. Mr. Rubert gone. Yep. Rubert is down. Um, in my result, uh, sorry, in my uh, other phase, I'm going to play Akrom Haven for four. So this is the card that, again, I, I played at the start of the last... Uh, I, try, I tried playing it in the last game and he got rid of it really quickly, but this is a really useful card. Um, so I'm also, for another one, going to play Mirror Sanctum. But yes, yeah, so uh, I've just played Mirror Sanctum and Akron Haven. That's the end of my resolve phase. Sorry, my deploy phase. Mm, um, yeah. So it's building up on me though. This yeah. One. So my, this is this is going to be a really nice resolve phase for me because I get to steal three thanks to that. Oh, sorry, wrong thing. Steal three because of that. One, two, three. Ruthless. So based on the fact that I don't think he's a Drake. Um, yeah, correct. He was the first dragon to be corrupted. There we go. So I only get to steal an extra one. But Mirror Sanctum is a copy of that, so I get to steal an extra one, and then I get to minus one. So that is a really, that is a really, really strong turn for me. I have played all of my cards though, so I'll end my turn by drawing, <laughs> and I will end there. Oh God, <laughs> I don't have much unfortunately, so okay. I've got to um, try and do some more digging. So um, I'm going to play Minma Draco for three. And that allows me to draw two, uh, draw cards based on the amount of characters you've got on your board. So I'll draw two cards. Yep. Right, uh, and then I'm going to play uh, Chroma Storehouse. Uh, yeah, great card. Yeah. So I will get uh, blues on each of these. So, that's so four. yeah, this um, yeah, gain two, two for, for each, each colour on each card. So that's two and two. Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Anything else you're going to play? Oh, yeah, like, I just don't know if I've got the legs to get this out. Um, I'll be honest, this has been a very... Yeah. This has been a very lucky game for me. Yeah, I don't know if I've like, got Like, how many cards have I got left? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 20. I've only had 8... I'll be honest, guys. I've only had 8 out of 30 of my cards come out. And genuinely... Uh, What's your still value up to now and, and um, gain? So my current net kind of gain yep. is if nothing else changed, next turn I would be st stealing five, minusing one. So you need to have six. You, you, I'm going to be taking six away from you. So okay. you have to leave yourself on a minimum of seven or you die. Okay, okay. okay. But yeah, I, I've only had eight cards so far in this game for me. And I've pretty much had all of the cards I need in the right order. This has been very lucky. Yeah, no, Math in. I'm math in. Take your time. Take your time. I've got to try and make the plays, you know, so... You've got to um, try. <laughs> Darnicus for six. Ooh, Darnicus is out. Um, and then plus one for each of your dragons. Uh, I'm guessing that... Actually, that does... Oh, that will be resolved, won't so you, it? Yeah. That will be resolved. However, action, during the resolve, yeah. you still count him as well. Yes. Because he hasn't yeah, got I a figure that. top right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And draw three cards. So, uh, yeah, uh, I'm all done anyway, so... Okay, you uh, draw a trade. Oh, wait, wait. You, no, you, have to, you haven't done your resolve yet. I'm doing yeah, my resolve. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so we've got, uh, we'll start here, two. All right, good turn, mate. So, uh, I'm going to start my turn by drawing. Oh, oh, oh this is so mean. <laughs> Honestly, where that, that, that last game was just, you know, you had great card draw. Yeah. Look at how go powerful on, this go turn's going to be. Go on, go on, go on, go on. All right, so I'm going <laughs> to start by attacking, may as well. Uh, I'm going to use, uh, Tenebris to attack your Minima Draco. So I'm just gonna get rid of him. Yeah. Uh, my, now I'm scared, now I'm scared. <laughs> my, Mali my Malium Drake is not going to attack. Yeah. So I'm gonna go into my deploy phase. So I'm gonna start by playing Akrom Belanium. Again, I can't believe how lucky I've got with my cards. And, sorry mate, with my, I've only got five points left, <laughs> but with four of them, I can erase a character and a location. Oh. So yes, I'm gonna get rid of your legendary and your Chroma Storehouse, leaving you with one liquid Draco left. Again, for those that haven't seen that one, it Ruthless. is a very, very good card, Breath of Fire. Um, and this is gonna be a big resolve phase. Actually, I think I might have won, actually. What, three steel, 
Yeah. One, two, three. I get two steel because this Mirror Sanctum is an Akron Haven, so that's two more steel. Uh, and then minus three. One, two, oh. three. Wow. Um, but yeah, so that was a really no, another really good game. Yeah, that was good. I've had, like if I'd have one more turn in me, I think I might have been able to get from my deck enough to be able to get. One, two, I was three, just trying four, to get five, rid of that locate. Uh, Akron elite. Haven, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. No, you're elite because like, it was just stealing too much. Like, I just couldn't get anything on the yeah. board. So, so I, I just won that game with yeah. nine cards. Oof. Lost to Eve. Many, many days. Many lots of uh, ships of Isk lost to Eve. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to do one more game with these two decks because so far it's 1-1 one, one, and both games were kind of like, yours was a whitewash of me, mine was a whitewash of you. Let's yep. see how this goes. Um, okay, so again, we'll do the same rules as before that technically I'll go first. Yep. Oh, sorry, you, I, no, I go first because uh, I'm Drakes. Um, I don't draw or trade. Uh, I am going to start by playing... I'm yeah, going to start, bit, yeah, yeah, I think I'm going to start every single turn by, uh, sorry, start every single Drake game just by literally, I've uh, Yeah, it's it's an end game deck, innit? You want to be ramping yourself up, yeah. like, at the, at the beginning. My first turn, I'm literally, can't draw a trade, can't attack, won't deploy, can't resolve, I'm just going to draw, uh, sorry, trade and end my turn. Good old Ruba, <laughs> back up <laughs> uh, for two. Yep. And then um, I'm going to... Uh, a big man early on. Oh damn! Six. Um, yeah. Um, and then I will resolve for two. Yep. And I also get an extra two for there. Uh, and I think I'll end by drawing. Cool. Uh, oh, sorry. I also get to draw three cards. I did forget. Yeah, to yeah. Do that. Perfectly fine. Yeah. Perfectly fine. Uh, so I will start my turn by drawing. Yeah. Uh, so I am going to. Uh, I can't attack. I'm going to start by playing... Oh, yeah. do I have one for one? Okay. Ah, here's a good idea, Charlie. Okay, I'm okay. quite I'm quite pleased with how I'm going to do this. So I'm going to play... Did you just third person yourself? I did just third person <laughs> myself. Yeah, I, 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 uh, I brown nose myself as well. Um, I'm going to play Impious Drake for two. Yep. Or Imp... Impious, yeah. Um, just don't let that thing live. I won't. <laughs> um, I'm also for three going to play Umbra Aqueous. Yep. Um, so if those haven't seen Umbra Aqueous, yeah, I, I haven't played him yet today. Yep. Um, oh, that's sorry, that's Umbra Igneous. Uh, Umbra Aqueous, uh, he's a three character, meaning he has three attack, three defense. Yep. He minuses two in the resolve phase, and his ability is that when he attacks and, and erases a character, I get to gain the shards that I destroyed. It's a good okay. way of gaining some shards back. Yep. Um, I'm then going to go to my resolve phase, which will be minusing three from you. Yep. And, uh, I am going to draw rather than trading. Yep. But before my turn is over, I will play my third card, which is ritualistic, ritualistic, yeah, ritualistic notion, uh, which is that for those on stream, where basically I get to sacrifice any card from my canvas and I can then destroy one of yours. So okay. I got great use out of my impious Drake. I managed to get minus one from you. Yeah. And then kill him. No bother. Oh, whoops. I completely forgot that, Chill. You're absolutely right. So this... Oh, I completely forgot does that. I forgot that impious Drake also has an ability. I was I was so hyper-focused on my strategy at the end that when you play, uh, play him, I choose you, obviously because you're the player, you have to erase a card. Okay. So it gives you a choice. So, Presumably, you're going to erase yeah, that and one. Yeah, and then you're going to take that one out. And, and then I would take that yeah, one out, yeah. Ooh, good okay. stuff, good plays. Um, and I have already drawn, so that is the end of my turn. Did one go to get taken out, or...? No, nothing got taken out, no. Okay. no. I've, had a, I've had another really strong start there. Okay, 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 okay. Impious should... Oh wait, sorry, because I did sacrifice him, yeah, so I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I just need to check something, though, because I think I've missed done my shards. I started that turn on... F I started that turn on 14. Yeah, because I did that. I started... I drew... I played, um, uh, I played Umbra Aqueous for three, one, two, three. I played that for two, one, two. And then, oh yeah, and then I played Vertical Notion for two. So yeah, I, I hadn't taken that away. There we go. I knew there was some, I was like, nine was just far too high for me to be on. So I'm down to seven. Good lad. You're excited. I got That's very good. excited. <laughs> I saw a way to get rid of your legendary and I was, yeah. I just, I was just proper t uh, tunnel visioning it. Right, now it's your turn. My apologies. Ooh, that's looking a little tight. <laughs> Right, so, um, looks like I traded four. 
Oh, you know what? When you place that down, I thought you were getting about to get nah, rid of that. Yeah, I, I didn't really want to get rid of this. It's such a powerful card against you, but like, I just, I just haven't got the shards right now, so I really need to like get myself back in yeah. the game a little bit, unfortunately. Um, and then <laughs> that's what he just traded. Over oh, back again. Oh, he's back. <laughs> yeah, he's back. He's back, and that's for two. Yep. Um, and then Prism Zone, really strong. Very, very strong. Um, and that will be. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to regret this one, but Go on. again, I just need my shards. Um, Go for it. I'm going to have to get me rid of my other dragon. So basically, this card erases up to two drakes. Yeah, that, and you've got rid yeah. of the other one of those. I'll, yeah, really. I, ju I just need the shards. I just need the shards. So, um, but that's what's been... Obviously oh, the whole... sorry, I didn't do the resolve. That's sorry. right, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, fine. Well. Obviously, that's the thing about the deck that I'm playing has been stealing so much from Ashley that he's now forced to get rid of his good cards. That's what this is supposed to be doing. All right, my turn. All right, all I have quite mate. a interesting turn. I am going to be getting rid of practically all my cards. I'm going to start by trading Draco Graveyard. As much as I would like to keep that, I just need the extra shards this turn. Yeah. Because I'm going to play... Oh, actually... Oh, wait, no. I'm... Oh. No, my turn's not as good as I thought, because I forget that you have to attack before yeah, doing it. Yeah, we always forget to attack. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I knew I was <laughs> going to attack. Play cards. But for some reason, I, for, in my head, I was thinking I could play these yeah, first with cards. Yeah. So I'll... The next turn will be stronger, but <laughs> yeah. so I'm going to play Akrom uh, Blenium. So that's my one of my strong cards for five. I played that in the. Still, yeah. Yep. Uh, I played that in the last one, which and it is gets really uh, protection against attacks, right? Yes. So that yeah. means that well, you can attack him, but he just wouldn't die. Okay. He basically means that he yeah. just he is invulnerable until you get rid of that. Okay. Um, and I'm also going to spend two. So I'm leaving myself quite low. Technically, you could kill me next turn if you had Mirror Sanctum and uh, your yeah. Cranium. I'm also going to put on him uh, Akron Claw, um, which is a uh, uncommon object. Uh, it gives him an extra two health, so that he's now a five-five character. It's an extra minus one to you, and also it makes him poisonous. So it means that even though he's only got five health, if you power a six character, he'd still kill him because it's poisonous. Yeah. Um, and because I have no cards in my uh, hand, we'll do the resolve. So that's minusing five from you. One, two, three, four, five. That's okay, that's okay. And I'll end my turn by drawing because I literally have no other uh, choice. Okay, I'm gonna start by drawing. Uh, I'm not gonna attack. Cool. Um, okay, so um, I'm gonna start by playing my turn of three. Did you draw a trade? Uh, I drew. Okay, cool. Yeah, I drew. Uh, so all characters on your canvas with a shard value of less than two, you get protection, yeah? Uh, yeah, and that is... Um, and then yep. uh, for my second card, I'm going to play Great Cloister. Oh, he has... Oh, I swear to God, if you, if you had... If you, have Mira, if you literally had Mirror Sanctum in your card... If you had Mirror Sanctum in your hand now, you could play it for one and you could win. You would win yeah, next time. Yeah, I know, yeah. That's how, that's, that's how it ended last time. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, unfortunately for ah. me, I, I, I don't have it. Yet. Um, so we're going to get to Resolve. Yep. Uh, which is a five, six, seven. Wow, and a steel one. So I'm only I'm down to one. Um, and then I am definitely 100% going to draw. Okay. So I'm going to have a quite a quick turn, if I'm honest. Uh, I'm going to start my turn by drawing. Uh, so my attack phase. So I am going to attack. Now I have to attack your. Uh, I have to attack your materno first. Yep. Uh, so I will attack them. However, because your materno has three attack, and my uh, that means my uh, Akron claw will be deleted as well. Yep. So, oh, and with Umbraquius, because I have erased the character, I get to gain the shards that I stole. Oh wow! Okay. That, that's what's so good about this character wow. is when I kill people. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I'll, I'll be honest. Out of all the Drake games I've played, and I've played double digits Drake games, it's the first time I've ever been able to get Two him out and actually yeah, attack yeah, someone. Okay, no, normally, yeah. someone kills him first. It can, yeah, it can mm. take a while, right? End my turn. Oh, I'm gonna do my resolve phase, which is minus four from you. One, two, three, four. Um, and I'm gonna then uh, end my turn by trading Search of Wisdom again. Uh, to get back up to eight. Okay. Ashley plays his turn. I'm sure he won't cheat and look at my one card. <laughs> I'll show everyone else and you can tell me. So I'm going to start by picking up. Okay, I'm going to play Monasteriness for three. And then I'm going to play Mirror Sanctum for one to copy Great Cloister. And then I'm going to resolve for five, eight. 
Uh, and then I'm going to steal two off of Charlie. And then I'm going to... Okay, so I'm going to uh, start my turn by drawing. Uh, I will attack. Yep, I will attack your Ruba Draco. Now, my character only has three hit point, uh, you know, attack and defense. Yours technically has four. So I won't, um, I won't uh, be able to destroy your Ruba Draco. But it will take rid of your, your get rid of your prism stone, which at least reduces your plus three. Now, uh, I am going to get down for four. One, two, three, four. Uh, I am going to get down a uh, Mortius Drake. But keep in mind, that I've got my Akron Blenium, which means right now they can't be attacked. They are they are strong. Uh, and I am going to then do my resolve phase, which will be minusing six from Ashley. One, two, three, four, five, so what, six. What do you mean by that? Like, will, it, will it but won't get shards? So, um, in that attack that I did against you, yeah. thanks to my protection, Umbra doesn't die. But, because I'm not killing your Draco, if I, if I was able to kill your Draco, I would have gained shards. Because I only killed the prism. Okay, this yeah, specifically yeah. says... You only gain the shards when you okay, raise a character, so okay, it's okay, a kind okay, of a the attack could have you know it wasn't horrendous for you because you still get your character. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. wasn't horrendous for me because I didn't die, but for me the main reason I did that is it got rid of your plus three, which is a massive uh, thing for you right now. So I've minus you down to six. Yeah. Uh, I'm now going to finish my turn as much as I really want a card draw. I can't end my turn with two shards because he is going to steal two from me. So I'm going to trade Draco Graveyard to get up to four, just so at least I can survive till the next <laughs> turn. And I'll end my turn there. Uh, okay. This is a much more close game. I'm simply going to draw on this one. Um, and I'm going to wrap myself up. There's a lot of locations in this one, actually. Like... I'm going to play Chroma Storehouse. Your locations are really powerful, though. You get so, so much uh, game from I them. get to choose one. Um, I'm obviously going to choose a red in this like uh, in this scenario, because I get six for that. Yep. Um, choose... Four, five, each. six. Okay, so... I obviously played it, which cost me three. Um, right. Um, so I've played that. Yeah, no, absolutely, Joe. It's a really strong card. I mean, this is a really interesting game at the moment because I've got a, an amazingly strong character board right now with two strong characters protected. Only more can come out. But Ashley has got is absolutely floor walking with locations. He's got a total of a net gain of uh, he's got a net gain of five and steal two, so seven in his locations um, that yeah, I'm going to struggle gonna... to get rid of. Yeah, because yeah, I'm currently gaining six. So you're, you're... Yeah. so the, obviously the issue I've got right now is I can't deal with that until that's done as well so mm. like um because they're both protected so uh, there's a very, very you need you need defense. you need a car you, what you I really need, need yeah I no need you need to get rid of this race. yeah yeah i need to be able to erase something you right. need uh you need breath of ice i think i just need to keep going through your deck right so you've drawn cool yeah. so i will start my turn by drawing um yep that's fine uh i will obviously go into my attack phase so uh, i will uh, use did I resolve? Uh, you did, did not resolve. You did not resolve. No, did not resolve. I'll let you do that as well. Yeah. 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 So sorry. I think that's so that's I'm gain sorry. five. Uh, gain seven, sorry. So I'll do three, three, four, four, five, six, seven. And then Plus steal two. Because we're chatting it through. Yeah, cool. It happens though. There you go, man. There you go. There you cool. Go. So you're up to 20. You're only 10 away from finishing. Yeah. Um, I'm on two. So yeah, I drew. Uh, I'm going to then go into attack phase. So I'm going to use Umbra Aquius, who is protected, to kill your Ruba yep. Draco. Yeah. Uh, by killing him with Umber means I get to gain two back. Um, in my deploy phase, I'm going to deploy nothing. And I'm going to end my turn. Do I draw? Yeah, I will draw. I'm glad I drew. Um, and... Oh, uh, sorry, I forgot to resolve, but it's fine. It doesn't really matter too much if you get those in the wrong order. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is interesting because Ashley is still gaining quite quickly. Right, so um, I'm gonna start by playing Breath of Ice to erase this location, Ooh. and then I'm gonna play. That really opens up. Um, Glacier Straker for three. Yep. And then I'm gonna attach Ring of Ice for three. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Makes him a six. Makes him six. Um, and I will resolve that. Uh, so that'll be still two. Game two. Then five. Okay. Uh, and then I will pick up. All right. So I will start by 
trading for three. Oh, that's interesting. I must admit, I thought I was going to do something different because I forget that you steal from me. So I was expecting something different. Will I attack? Will I attack? So here's my dilemma. I don't mind talking through it because, you know, it helps the strategy. Theoretically, I could... I have no reason to attack you because these cards don't gain you any... Um, any, you know, yeah, net gain. There's, like, there's no benefit, right? Yeah. However... Yes, exactly. As as Chill said, if I, I could do it where I use my Mortius Drake to kill your Ring of Fire and then yeah. use your... Uh, and that, that would also kill him. Sorry, because I can't just direct the Ringer. That would kill him. And then use Umbra Aqueous uh, and basically do a double attack. That means that it would be a complete wipe. My two cards would be gone. Your two cards would be gone. And I would... Oh, actually, you attack before you deploy, don't you? You know what? Yeah, I will do this. I will do this. And suddenly <laughs> it's... Uh, the, 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 the penny has dropped. Um, yes, I will do, Rhea. So, uh, okay, this is going to be interesting. Notice that I'm currently on five shards. I'm going to use Mortius Drake to attack first. That will kill your Ring of Ice. Yeah. But and leave your Draco, uh, your Glacio Draco, on technically one, but he also dies. So my second attack, I will use my Umbra Aqueous to attack your uh, your remaining card. That will now wipe them out, so we both die, but. Because I have a Razor character, I do get to gain those three shards. Yeah. Now we go to my deploy phase. And because I gain those extra shards, it means I can <laughs> now play my legendary Tenebra. So my original plan was to play him at the start of my last my turn. Yeah. But because you stole from me, I couldn't. Now yeah. I can. Um, so, and this is going to get close as well, because that's going to cost me six points to play. Now, normally that would have left me dead because you're going to steal from me. Now, I get to choose a location or character destroy. I'm going to get rid of, as much as I want to get rid of your you stealing from me, I think right now it's more important for me to reduce your chroma input. So I'm going to get rid of your monstery nest. Um, and then my resolve phase is going to be stealing three from you. One, two, three. Uh, and I'll end my turn by drawing. Yep. Oof. It's okay, it's okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll wait for my turn until you get back. It does affect you. Have you just been telling all of your... Uh, yeah, so um, I'm going to start by playing... Uh, did you draw a trade? Or does it not really matter? I drew. You drew it cool. Yeah, Corellium Draco. Yep. For three, so you have to discard it. Ah, uh, uh, but yep, discarded. Uh, and then I'm going to play Draco Watt for two. That allows me to draw another card. Um, and then I'm... Gonna resolve for uh, one. Okay, good job. All right. Uh, I'm. Oh, and draw a trade. I will draw. Nice. All right. Uh, I'll be honest. This has been a very even game, but I'm feeling like you're about to start running away with this because I'm at minimum. I'm now at minimal I, uh, shards with minimal cards. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. No, we'll no, see. No, 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 no. Um. Okay. So. So uh, I've drew. Uh, in my attack phase, I will get rid of your. Uh, this one. Your. Yeah. Uh, something Draco. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what? Then in my deployment phase, I will deploy nothing. Um, in my resolve phase, I get to steal three. You haven't got any blocks out yet, have you? You do have no. a you do have a couple of blocks in your deck, so they might come out soon. Yeah, my unfortunately my counter cards haven't really come no, out. No, not in the order yeah. you wanted. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I'm going to end my turn by actually resolving that to get four. Okay. Okay. So I'm that solved my problem of shards, but now I have an issue of no cards. <laughs> So I'm going to draw. This has definitely been the most even Drake uh, Drake Dragon game I've played. I'm so far I'm quite happy with how these decks are playing out. Play Draco Fledgling for one. Um, but then I get plus one for each other dragon on my character, so it's basically a free card. It's a free card, yeah. Um, Do you want to resolve before you draw? Yeah, a yeah, I'm, yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. That's right. Yeah. So yeah, I'll resolve. Yeah. So that's gain two, yeah. steal two. Okay, we're all good, and I'll pick up. All right, uh, so I'll start my turn by drawing because I have to. Oh, that is a nice card. So for th uh, so I'll do my attack first. Um, it honestly doesn't really matter, but I guess I'll just get rid of the most powerful one for no other reason that I can. Yeah. Um, I'm going to, for three, play uh, Acron Blockade. So it's a minus one. I'm going to bring this up on the screen because it's the first time I have played this one today. Um, it's a minus three in the top, uh, sorry, minus one in the top right, cost me three, but the power is dragons can't attack. So even though I'm no longer protected, even if you now had the most powerful dragons out, you can't attack until you get rid of that. So it, it, it but yours of... as well, you can't attack. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, I, f I forget. <laughs> I forget that he's a dragon. I forget that he's a dragon. Um, you know what? As much as I could turn around, I'm gonna un undo that. I'm gonna leave it for now for two reasons. One, right now I need to reduce how many shards you're gaining, yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's an extra minus. And two, I'm aware that I still do have a few sacrifice cards in there. So if I get a sacrifice card, that's the card I'll sacrifice. Um, so yes, uh, I'll now do my resolve phase, which is to steal three, one, two, three, and minus one. Uh, and I'll end my turn by drawing. Beautiful, I will end my turn. Okay, cool. Oh, um, actually, actually, actually. Oh, the phone. You've played your legendary, haven't you? He, D Darnacusk's already dead this game, isn't he? I've, yeah, I've got him out super early. All right. Yeah, yeah, super early. Chances are you don't have anything great. You, I don't I don't think you have anything that's six anyway, unless, unless you uh, have an object of power. So I am going to end my turn by actually playing my Breath of Fire. So this is, you could argue this is a, maybe a tiny bit of a waste, because it erases a character and location. I could have maybe waited until a better character came out to kill, because he's basically worthless. However, I'm more thinking about reducing your current uh, yeah, game. Yeah, no, you now, could, you crack on. Again, it's really tempting to get rid of one of the steals, because that gives me better turns. But I just want to reduce how much you're gaining, so I'm going to get rid of your Chroma Storehouse. So Chroma Storehouse, and that is it's gone, please. Cool. All right, and with that, I end my turn. Okay, hey, so uh, I'm going to stop by drawing. Okay, so... I'm in a bit of a tight spot now. Got we both are. Yeah, both yeah. Are. so um, I get to draw a card that costs me three. Yep, and you're playing Liquid Draco, which is a three cost card, which, yeah, the action was he got to draw a card. Uh, so I'm going to play Breath of Fire for four, and I'm going to yeah. take both of them out. Really good. That completely... Uh, that completely changes things, mate. Yeah. That, that is... Um, and then... Uh, that's a great card to have. Yeah, that seems like a staple if you're gonna you're gonna set up a deck. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Um, right, and then I'm gonna resolve, uh, so we will get still two. Yep, still two. See, look at that. I've got two shards. I've got two shards. No cards in my hand and no cards out. Uh, I'll say now, if I don't, if I, I don't think I can now win this. But if I did, I would be gobsmacked. And how are you gonna end your turn? Uh, I'm gonna trade for four actually. Cool. Oh, that. Oh, let me add that back. So just to hit the X and then give yourself four. All right, so my turn is really simple and really depressing, to be honest. I drew because I had no cards. Can't attack. I can't, I have no shards to play my card. Nothing to resolve. And, <laughs> and to end my turn, because he's still got two steel, I have to trade. So I'll trade my okay, Drake yeah, Ambush yeah, to yeah, get up to that's six. That's true, yep. So that, my turn is literally pick up a card, get rid of the card. Your turn, okay. actually. Right, so um, I'm going to draw nothing to attack, um, and then three. Uh, that allows me to draw a card, and then I'm going to four. Oh, he's getting out his Ignis. Um, and then I'm oh, no, going to resolve, which will be... It's just Ignis. One, two... And then steal two. Oof. Damn, good turn. All right, so my turn then. It's probably going to be a very simple turn, to be honest. Uh, yeah, I'm going to draw uh, draw at the start of my turn. Can't attack. Can't deploy. Well, I can deploy, but this card, there's literally no reason for me to deploy right now. Um, I'm going to simply end my turn by trading it for three. Essentially, okay. I'm... I am stuffed at this point. I have no choice but to keep drawing, trading, drawing, trading until I get... I, I need, like, one card that can turn the tables, and I don't think I've got that in my deck right now. I feel like this is going to be the start of a long ending. Right, so... Um, I'm going to start by drawing. Yep. Be greedy or not be greedy? That is the question. Uh, right now, um, there is yeah. no reason for you not to be greedy. Uh, I'm going to play for three. The, the one thing I've learned about this game is that... You should not yeah. really hold on to cards unless they are useless without something else. Because so many times oh, no, I've like, held yeah, on to a no, card. Yeah, yeah. Not, not really like that. I mean, oh, okay. I mean, go early or not go early on something. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. Um, so you played that for three, which is, uh, yeah, Glacier Drake. Yeah, and I can't really do anything else now because I'm down to two. So that'll be plus two. Uh, yeah, plus two, still two. I'm going to trade. Gonna trade? trade this in for three. Oh, okay. Okay, you trade pendant. All right, my turn is probably oh, going to be you, my man. My turn is probably going to be same. I do feel like this is the, we're going to just do beginning to the end. I'm going to start by drawing. 
See, this is the issue. I can't, I can't do anything. I, I can play. I'm just going to show it because I'm going to trade it. Um, I'm going to get that for it. Yeah, no worries. I have this, which is to, uh, it's my guy. Is it a race? Or a yeah, character? it's, it's a raise, a raise two dragons, which would be great. But the issue is it costs me four. And you're going to get stolen. And it's, it's going to get stolen. Um, so you're going to steal to win. So I have to end my turn by trading that up to nine. That does leave me on good points, but yeah. yeah. I'm just going to get the pizza out of the other room. Is that... Uh, That's the end of my turn, yeah. Right, so nice and simple. We're going to take your card. Okay, here we go. So we'll do some big moves now. We're going to play uh, Draco Hatchlin for one. Then we're going to play Strength in Numbers two. Um, and that gets us two, four, six, eight, ten. And then we're going to follow up with strength in numbers for two and that gets us and then that would leave us three 27 28 29 and i'm just gonna wait i'm gonna, I'm gonna wait till he comes back in because i'm not gonna finish it <laughs> sorry about that just gonna so i you know it's 24. Holy I had, how did you I've do that saving strength in numbers oh so my I that double all right uh, so that's yeah. one two three and then um, we're going to resolve. Oh, you haven't even resolved yet? No. Oh, I so think you might. now yeah. we're going to resolve for three. Two, three, and steal two. Uh, we're going to steal two. And then I'm going to trade. Yeah, trade to win. Three. Well played. And there we go. That is the first two decks of this series and the games to support how they've played. What did you think? From seeing the deck builds, seeing those three games, and maybe even doing some testing yourself, I would love to hear your feedback in the comments of how balanced do you feel these decks are? Are they fun to play? Is there anything you would change yourself? Your feedback is really valuable as I'll be doing more deck builds in the future, and I want to make sure that I'm providing the best possible chance for people to create their own decks or use these and get the most fun out of a chroma. I really appreciate you guys watching. There will be a part two for the next two decks. Keep an eye out for that. Like, subscribe, all that jazz as always. And I've been Foulplay Gaming. Stay wholesome.